Ooh, it has been a rough, rough past couple of days. Everyone in the house is sick. I got sick. I usually don't get sick, so my voice is kind of raspy. You'll have to excuse me. But I took a day off because I needed it to rest. Back at it, making coffee and talking about stuff today about video games and dad stuff and manga. The subscription service thing is getting really out of hand. Uh, Ubisoft Plus and their new game, their new Star Wars game, triggered a thought in my mind that was kind of like one of those told you so's, and so I want to get into that more today. Um, first, they have, you know, this new Outlaw, Star Wars Outlaws, game that looks really good, it looks fun, um, but if you look at the pricing structure of this game, it is a full price game that releases on, I forgot the exact day, but that's not the point. The point isn't the exact day it releases. The point is that you can't play this game if you don't pay extra for their early access, and that early access is behind, you guessed it, their subscription service. Now, you can go ahead and buy their like premium one, and the premium one allows you to get their, you know, early access as well as a bunch of extra bundles and stuff like that because that's how it goes but this we we've seen this before this problem that is starting to happen and it's the exact reason why they're taking you hostage as gamers and that is that they are basically putting these games behind paywalls like the beginning of the game which makes sense you have to buy the game right but i'm talking about the actual content they're forcing people to, if you're a fan or if you want to play the game early, you have, or be a part of the conversation, especially creators, you have to get early access. And early access is only granted if you pay extra for their whatever. We all, like the thing that bothers me about this, I'm not articulating it well because my brain's not working properly yet. The thing that bothers me about this is the game doesn't release on, I think it's the 30th? Could be wrong there but it doesn't release that day it releases three days earlier that's the release date if you want to just buy the base game and this more again ties to people who want to play it on day one if you want to buy the base game you're just going to pay 70 bucks for this game you are penalized for not buying the premium service and you can't play it the day it actually comes out this was the starfield debacle this is the thing i was talking about with starfield Starfield releases a, released a certain date. If you wanted to play it early, you could pay extra, $20 extra for their premium content. You got extra skins, this, that, and the other, and you got to play it early. This kind of mindset, this kind of thing that's happening is exactly how this did all digital as well as subscription service push from the gaming industry is starting to completely take over and affect your wallets. This is the thing. It's real scummy and it bothered me. So I started looking at other things and coincidentally got an email from EA saying, hey, guess what? We're raising our prices of our EA Play. So our subscription service is going up. This is what ended up happening. A lot of people got the digital gaming thing going on, the Series S. I even fell for it and not fell for it, but I even went down that road. There's nothing wrong with the Series S in theory. And in doing so, they were like, okay, cool, all digital. Hey, look, all these subscription services. I don't have to actually purchase any games. I can just use these subscription services. And three years ago, it was very, very affordable. EA Play was dirt cheap. All these different gaming subscription services were dirt cheap and were good. Ubisoft Plus, or whatever they want to call it, their top tier is $17.99 a month. $17.99 a month for their games on PC and on Xbox, essentially. That is their Ubisoft Plus premium tier. $17.99 a month on top of Game Pass Ultimate, on top of PlayStation Premium whatever, on top of EA Play, on top of you name it, down the line, the all digital thing that's going on started to push people into this category. Like, oh, I'll just get a Series S or I'll get the digital version of the PlayStation 5 and we should be good because, you know, I got just gonna subscribe. I don't have to really pay for any games. 
they're jacking up the prices more and more and more. And now we're seeing with games, like really highly anticipated games, they're going, hey, we're gonna release this game to you, except instead of just releasing this game to you, we're also going to um, put the actual release date behind a premium paywall and make you pay extra money to play the game on its release date. And if you decide not to play the game on its release date, you can wait three days and play it on its actual release date. Early access, this term makes you feel like you're some exclusive member when there's nothing special about it. All early access means for people is I spent 20 extra dollars or 30 or however much the additional money is. It really doesn't matter at this point just to play this game early. And the problem that I see with this kind of mindset is these gaming companies are starting to do this more and more. Ooh, that was a big roll. What do we get here today? One, green. Green for envy. <laughs> these companies want money. And I, I think that there is a solution for some of this. Solution number one, which is a somewhat less desirable one for some people is don't buy it. Do not buy early access. Stop buying these early access passes to basically prove their point that people are willing to spend 20 bucks to play a game three days early. Let's kind of hold these gaming companies accountable a little bit. I don't know if this will work. I really don't know if this will work. If we can like somehow all agree that we're just not going to spend extra money on three day early access. It sucks because uh, me as a creator, I want to play this game the day it comes out because I make content and I don't want to be late to the conversation because that is the nature of this work. Unfortunately, if you're late to the conversation, you often get glossed over. But I believe strongly in this. I believe really strongly in this. And I fell for the Starfield one and I felt like such a scumbag. It's good to have hot coffee. My throat has been a mess since I started having this cough. It's been brutal. Let me grab my computer so I can actually look into the prices here. And I wanna have an actual real estimate for you. Okay, so when it comes to this Star Wars Outlaw situation, Star Wars Outlaw, I want um, Outlaws the pre-order is available. And so if we go over on Ubisoft, you can see that it's $69.99 for their game, $70. Or you can buy it for $17.99 a month on Ubisoft Plus Premium. They have PC Digital, PlayStation 5 Digital, Xbox Digital, and Luna Cloud, whatever that means. With this game, it comes with all of that. And that is the ultimate edition, the base game, the pre-order bundle, three day early access, season pass, rogue infiltrator bundle, sabak shark bundle, and digital art book. That is what you get with their day one Ubisoft plus premium. Now it doesn't, yeah, it looks like if you do that, you actually get the game itself if you're subscribed to their service. The game itself though, the base game, just so you guys know, is $70. The gold edition gives you three day early access as well as their season pass, which I am assuming there's gonna be more stuff. The Jabba's Gambit exclusive mission and the Kessel Run. Both of these things are, that's ridiculous. It's 40 extra dollars for their Gold edition in 129, $130 for their ultimate edition. Listen to me for a second. They're going, hey, here's $70 game. Here is a $70 game. Instead of you just buying this game, we have other stuff, this ultimate edition that has arguably the content of the game itself. Oops, accidentally turned on my grinder. It has the Rogue Infiltrator bundle, which is cosmetics, okay. Sabak Shark Bundle, Cosmetics, great. Digital Art Book, yep, $130 for a game. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. 
I don't even know if there's a physical copy of this game. Is there? Let's find out right now. Star Wars Outlaws. Outlaws. Physical copy. There is. Okay. There's a physical copy. Great. So there's a physical copy of the game itself. This mindset that's starting to exist in the gaming industry is exactly what happens when you start to put subscription services and digital content the, as the forefront. They can really do whatever they want. They can go, here's a game, here's a $70 game. And then all of a sudden they go, 130 bucks, $130 for the ultimate edition that has just cosmetics, but early access, as well as their season pass. This season pass thing that exists in gaming has been around for a very long time. Uh, Notorious, a game that I remember first seeing it really become a huge thing was something like Borderlands. You would play the Borderlands game and then they would release some more stuff. You get the first season pass and you get tons of extra missions and content. I don't know if this is going to be similar in that regard, we'll see. But that was something that was kind of exciting. I don't know what this game has to offer, but what I can tell you is that this type of thing that happens in the gaming industry is becoming extremely, extremely tiresome. I don't have an answer as far as all of the different additional prices, but I will say that the subscription services are starting to really trap people. And let me explain. Ultimate Edition, $130. That's ridiculously priced. Should you purchase an Ultimate Edition for $130? No. I mean, for goodness sakes, the Ultimate Edition of Call of Duty is $100. $129 for a single player game that has additional content like uh, different gear and stuff and cosmetics. I mean, the ultimate edition of uh, Borderlands 3, I could be wrong, it's 99 bucks. That's still a lot of money. That's a ton, $100, but you know, whatever. So they go, well, 130 bucks is a lot, but 18 bucks isn't that much, right? 18 bucks is pretty good. You could just get, you know, Ubisoft Plus. Here's where the problem ends up being, and this is what bothers me a ton, is you get Ubisoft Plus, $17.99. You got that thing going. You're fine. But then you have an issue. You saved yourself money. You got Outlaw. You're good. You're, you're doing great. It's a good game. Let's say it's a great game. And you're like, sick, I'm going to spend months playing it, all of this extra stuff. The season pass is coming out, so then it's going to incentivize me to hold on to the subscription services. Now, I want to say this. I think it's important to be said. I don't believe that video game companies intentionally create these different kind of systems to steal money from people. What I do believe is that they create these types of things to maintain some sort of additional trickle in money, right? All of these companies that are starting to put out their subscription services are just showcasing that they are trying to figure out how they can just guarantee that cash flow. That's pretty much what it is. I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with subscriptions. I mean, look at the 24 hour model, for instance, 24 hour fitness, LA fitness, some of these cheaper fitness things, this isn't US based. I don't know if they're international or not. Cheap, cheap uh, gym membership between, you know, and even crunch or any of these planet fitness between the Costs of 15 bucks a month all the way up to like, you know, $50 a month, which is relatively inexpensive in the grand scheme of gym and fitness equipment. I mean, Planet Fitness is notorious for having an extremely low cost, 15, 20 bucks a month, really inexpensive. And all of their gym equipment is light. They do not have heavy weights there because of the certain type of demographic that'll just buy a gym membership, and this is how they do it, not use it. I was a sucker for this when it came to Game Pass Ultimate. I didn't realize I was still subscribed to it for months on end, just giving Microsoft 18 bucks a month because I was irresponsible with my, under, with my subscription service. This kind of thing is really what ends up becoming a big issue. Now, Ubisoft Plus grants you access to games, but that's it. They grant you access to their games. They don't grant you access to online play. That You still have to purchase that through uh, Xbox or PlayStation. They don't grant you access to anything special as far as games with gold. No, this is just games. Just access to a gaming library. And the problem therein lies, let's say you're excited about Star Wars Outlaws, as I am very excited for it. I will be purchasing that game. I will be purchasing the actual game itself. I'm not sure if it's going to be a console title I purchase or a PC title I purchase. Still trying to figure out the PC thing. 
Finances aren't the best, so building a gaming rig is tough to wrap my head around right now. We'll see what ends up happening. I'm not saying it won't happen, but I, I'm looking into what I can afford properly. Hey, if you want to help out though, I mean merch, we got merch. This one, this is only available till the end of this month. Once April is done, this Toriyama tea is out. No more. This is the creator. That's what it's called, the creator. Next month is going to be sick. We have a Final Fantasy VII one that's going to be dope. I'll be showcasing that and we'll be getting some pictures up and you guys can get those going. But this, again, is going until the last day of April. This is the Toriyama tea. This is right here, play. And on the back, on the cup, it says coffee. The Dragon Ball going into the coffee cup. Delicious. But again, I don't know where it's going to be. The problem that I'm, I see is that $17.99 a month with a game that has a season pass, which would make you believe that there's additional content coming out. What happens six months down the line? What's six times $18? Real quick, simple math, 128 bucks, right? Did I do that right? Yeah, no. Six times 18, $108, right? Yeah, 108 bucks. $108, okay? That's just six months. Let's just say that it takes nine months. Let's say they're good, and every two to three months they release more content, keeping you involved in the game, and the game is good enough to give you that fun stuff. Let's just say it's a year. One year times 18 is 216. That, my friends, is a lot more than $130 for the one game itself. The problem that you also have is, let's say you're like, I'm done with this. I don't want to play it anymore. I'm good. No more Ubisoft Plus. What happens to all that content? It's no longer yours. You rented it for months on end. You got to play it. It's gone. Oh, I want to play it again. You have two options. You buy it secondhand. I don't know what happens to all your exclusive content. I don't know if that stays with your account. I don't know if that's tied behind Ubisoft Plus. I'm not sure. But... I want to get that game again. Well, now you have to look and buy it secondhand. And sure, let's say you can get it for half price. You get it for 30 bucks. Let's say you can buy it on sale. Get the ultimate edition for $60 at some point or 50 bucks because it goes on hyper sale. Great. Super awesome for you. Totally cool. You already spent $208 or 216, 216 bucks. Yeah. This is the problem we're seeing. This is what I am understanding that not understanding this is where i'm kind of looking at the landscape of things and going like this this is not good for us as gamers it seems that it is a affordable option to go sub based sub games all the stuff you just own nothing this is worse than digital only because they start putting astronomical prices ridiculous prices on these games, $130, $109. It's ridiculous that like just for a season pass and everything, you're getting an additional, it's crazy to me. And chances are there's gonna be a season pass two because that's what happens. You get season pass one and then all of a sudden there's season pass two and you're like, wait a second, I paid 40 bucks for season pass one. Season pass two is another $40. I mean, it's not even DLC. It's, it's just, it's crazy to me and it's really frustrating. And as a father and someone who is obviously trying to figure out the landscape of this stuff as well as provide proper uh, decision-making advice for friend, not friend, for my family and my kid, like, what do I do when I wanna be like, let's play this game, except you gotta play into this new scheme which is all these sub-based things. It just, it isn't a good look. It's not like what I'm experiencing now, where it's like, hey, you wanna read a book? Here's a book. Hey, you wanna play a game? Here's the game, right? Like, I, I think that, yes, there is an element of this physical stuff that is a little bit more nostalgic one, but also kind of old school. I get it, I understand, listen to, you know, albums or records, playing games physically, being able to use, whatever, right? Sure. We're seeing that that is kind of phasing away and I understand that the digital future is here, I get it. But there's just something that feels off about this idea of subscription only. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit more conspiracy theory. I don't know, but it just looks weird and it finally is starting to show what it looks like and we're seeing the realization of it all. 
Ubisoft Plus when it first launched was $10. And now we're seeing Ubisoft Premium with additional content, all this extra stuff for 18 bucks. PlayStation Print Plus Premium has gone up a ton. I mean, and again, EA, all of these prices are increasing. Sure, we're at a time where there's a lot going on in the world and we have a lot of whatever, inflation. But the price increases that we're seeing aren't in line with the percentage increase in inflation. They just don't line up at all, okay? We're not talking like seven to 10% here. We're talking 25, 30% at times. In, in the past three years, we've seen some prices go up exponentially. I mean, we're seeing this across the board. Disney just really upgrade up their Disney Plus. Hulu just updated it. All of these online subscription services are doing crazy things. You were hooked in Netflix and now you're like, well, now I can't share accounts. Sure, that's its own thing. I get it, whatever. But like prices, prices going up, 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 up. Hulu. The price for the base tier now is the price of commercial free five years ago. And now the commercial free tier is going up. As I said before, if you look at all of your subscription services and start to tally up how much you're paying for owning nothing and renting, not even renting, just getting access to something, you will realize very quickly you're spending thousands of dollars a month, not a month, I always say that, thousands of dollars a year on these things that you own nothing. And maybe to you, the ownership of media is not even at all on your radar. And to that, hey, I don't think there's anything wrong if in your mind you're like, I don't really care if I own any of this. This is not important to me. That's fine. For me, it does bother me because I want to be able to tangibly, in some way, hand something to someone. I like that feeling. I like that sharing kind of thing. I like to be able to be like, hey, you wanna borrow this? Here it is. I know that on the PC, that's not something that exists. And I might be talking more in regards to music and books and stuff like that, but even with the digital purchase, I can hand over a device or give someone something and you know, whatever may family share for that matter. With Steam, that's something that's pretty special and they get access to those games to my library I'm building. That feels better to me, a lot better than this subscription based thing. I again, made this challenge earlier and I want to challenge you and put it in the comments. So you might have to do a little homework and come back to the video, put in the comments, Tally up Netflix, Spotify, all of these services, all of them, not cell phone built, but media based cons consum consumables. Spotify, Netflix, Hulu, Crunchyroll, Shonen Jump, all of it. Tally it together. Stuff that grants you access to stuff you can purchase individually, right? And let me know in the comments how much a month your subscription bill is. I wanna know, right? I wanna know how much that is. I wanna see if maybe I'm off base, maybe if it's only 60 to you know 70 bucks. But I know that when I did it, it was so sobering to see how much money I'm spending on what, nothing. I'm spending it on nothing. I don't own any of this. And I think some of the budget allocation that we can might be able to do is instead of renting all these games the way that we are doing it right now, take yourself out of some of these subscription services that you're barely using and be like, okay, let's take that money and let's still put it into a pot. Okay. Let's take 17 plus 17 plus eight, let's put it into a pot and every month use that to purchase media that we otherwise would purchase, right? A movie here, rent a movie for $4 rather than stream, you know, streaming it for whatever it may be. Let's see what that looks like. Let's maybe try to readjust, realign, and maybe, just maybe, if we do this together, we could potentially make a difference. I don't know. I just don't like the direction we're going, and I really want to challenge this industry to be better. I'm going to end on this. Helldivers 2 is one of the, I would say, greatest examples of what's good games and, and, and like actual consumer-based decision-making looks like. A $40 game at launch that is live service, that has actual support, and that is available on multiple platforms, PC and PlayStation, cross-play, not cross-save, that is actually bringing people together with no crazy messages and no scummy 
pay things. You can buy the base game and play the game and get every single, they're not called battle passes, and they don't expire. It can still exist, and that game was $40. 40, $30 less than the actual standard games that we see now. A $40 live service game that actually has content to play and is bringing people together. It's possible. It's very possible. That game wasn't expected to do what it did, but I think it's the biggest slap in the face to the big boys the biggest middle finger to the whole industry saying it's still possible. I think we can do something about it. So you have your homework, get involved, get a t-shirt, support the channel. <laughs> oh. And uh, have a good rest of your day. I know I will. Most of all, I feel good to say it. Happy gaming.